Hey there, thank you for tuning in. If you're new to this channel, my name is Shania. And on this channel, you'll find loads of DIY tutorials. Some of the tutorials are of things that I made from scratch and others of the tutorials are things that I took and I just refashioned them. So in this part one, I'm gonna be breaking down how to actually make the pattern um, for the dress. And then in the second part, I'm gonna be showing you how to actually transfer the pattern to the fabric and sew the actual pattern. In this tutorial, I'm actually starting with the pattern that I made in this video here um, about how to create your own custom bodice block. So at the end of part one, we traced our patterns onto the fabric and then we cut them out. So you should now have your front and back pattern in order to start this part two. Place a sewing clip at the hemline and another clip at the top seam allowance line of the pattern. Then flip the fabric over and remove the clips near the fold. That's if you have any clips near your fold. Then you wanna take your paper pattern and place it on top of the fabric with the wrong side of the paper pattern facing up. So make sure that the top of the make sure that the top and the bottom of the pattern is aligned with each clip that we previously placed on the fabric. Then you want to trace all around the pattern and inside the dart as well. So this is what the fabric should look like for each of the pattern pieces once you unfold them. And then I know it's a little hard to see because I used white chalk, but here's a little diagram of what it should look like in general. All right, so we'll come back to the body of the dress a little bit later, but now let's focus on making the straps. So you wanna cut out two rectangular strips of fabric, and these are the measurements here on the screen. Fold each strip of fabric in half with the wrong side facing out, then use your sewing clips to hold the fabric in place, and then sew a half inch in from the edge of the fabric. In case you're wondering what my sewing machine settings were, I put the length on three, the stitch width on 2.5 and the tension on 4. Next you want to cut off the excess fabric and then you want to use a loop turner or a safety pin to turn the straps so that they're right side out and obviously you're repeating this step for both straps. Let me know if you'd like me to post a video on how to flip a tube inside out using a safety pin but in the meantime I do have a couple videos where I've used this method so be sure to check the description box for a link to those videos. So you're gonna need two pieces of elastic and in order to make sure that you have the right amount of elastic, what you wanna do is you wanna take a roll of elastic and you want to start where the top of your dress will be and you wanna lightly stretch it until you get to the back of where your dress will be and then you want to cut it. So to get the elastic inside of the fabric tube that we made earlier, I stuck a safety pin through the top edge of the elastic and then I threaded the elastic through the tube. Now obviously you wanna repeat the same step for the second elastic since we have two straps. So here's how to prevent your elastic from getting lost in the tube. So once your safety pin is inside the tube, you wanna pin the other end of the elastic to the fabric then continue threading the elastic through until you reach the other end of the tube. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. So when you're finished, your straps should look like this. And as you can see, I have the safety pin on both ends of each strap. So you wanna carefully remove the safety pin and then sew the elastic to the fabric. Make sure to do this one safety pin at a time so that the elastic doesn't get lost inside of the tube. So I use the straight stitch in one direction and then again in the opposite direction and back and forth for extra security. And I only went about two or three times. So when you're finished, your straps should look like this. And what you can do to make sure that the fabric is evenly gathered is you can just lightly tug on both ends of the strap. So getting back to the front pattern of the dress, we want to start by sewing the darts. So as you can see, I already did the one on the right side, but before we sew the darts with the sewing machine, we'll base stitch the dart with the needle and thread. You're starting at the point of the dart, and I'm putting my needle through the top, and when my needle comes up, I want it to come along 
the line. It doesn't matter which line, the left or the right, just one of them for now. And then we're gonna go, whatever line we chose, we're gonna go back on that line on the top. And when we push our needle through, we want our needle to come up on the other side, on the other line. Then we're gonna pull our needle up. So then you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna go on the same side like so and when your needle goes under you want to try to go on the other side like so and then you kind of want to pinch the fabric so that the two lines touch each other like so so you should see like a crease like that basically um, and just hold it in place like that. So then you wanna continue that same pattern. So you wanna start on one line, then you wanna go through that same line, and you wanna make sure that the needle goes under and reaches the other line. Then you wanna pull up your needle and then start again on that same line that you left off of and just keep repeating this pattern. I hope that this makes sense. I didn't wanna make this section too long, so let me know if you'd like me to make a separate video on this base stitch pattern. You're just gonna keep doing that until you get to the end of the dart. So when you finish sewing your dart, it should look like this. And now what you wanna do is you want to cut the needle off of the thread. And now you wanna use your sewing machine to sew over the basting stitches that we just made for the dart. And in case you're wondering, I used a straight stitch. The length is four and the tension is also four. Now that we have sewn both darts, the front pattern of your dress should look like this. So now we want to make a pattern for the facing, which will help to support the straps. So place the front pattern of your dress onto a piece of fabric and then trace the top edge of the dress. So this is what it should look like. Starting from the center of the top edge of the tracing, you wanna measure three inches down and then make a mark. Then use that mark as a starting point to mimic the same shape of the tracing. And then after that, you wanna use a vertical line to connect the ends of both lines. Then you wanna cut out the facing pattern and you don't need to worry about adding any seam allowance. So this is what your facing pattern should look like. Now it's super important that you search the bottom edge of the facing since the top edge will be hidden. So I use my serger to professionally finish the edge of my facing, but if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch and just set it at the shortest length on your sewing machine. So your facing should look like this. So lay down the front pattern of the dress with the right side facing up, then layer the straps on top of the pattern and make sure that the bottom edge of the straps are not hanging over the edge of the pattern. Then layer the facing pattern on top of the straps. Pin the three layers down, so by the three layers I mean the front pattern, the straps, and the facing, and then serge the edge for a professional finish, or you can use a zigzag stitch set to the shortest length if you don't have a serger, and then just sew about a half inch in from the edge if you're using a zigzag stitch. So the front of your dress should now look like this, and now you wanna flip the facing over so that it's now on the inside of the dress. When you do this, you'll see how we've been able to wedge the straps in between the front pattern and the facing. Doesn't it look super professional? So you wanna pin along the edge where the facing meets the front of the dress, and then with the right side of the dress facing up, you wanna sew as close as you can to the edge of the fabric. And this is just to ensure that the facing doesn't flip on the wrong side. The best way to go about sewing as close as possible to the edge is by wedging the crease along the inside of the presser foot and this will help you get close to the edge. Okie dokie, so your finished edge should look like this. Now tell me that doesn't look professional. It does, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put aside the front pattern of the dress and we'll, we'll get back to that later. But for now, let's focus on the back of the dress. So we'll use a piece of elastic to create a gathered effect at the back of our dress. Now to measure the right amount of elastic, you wanna lightly stretch your elastic from one side of your back to the other side and then cut. 
Now before you add the elastic to the dress, you wanna search the top edge of the back pattern. To install your elastic, you wanna set your machine to a zigzag stitch and then lightly tug at your elastic while you sew the elastic just underneath the searched area or maybe in your case, the zigzagged area. Okay, so now that the elastic is attached, you wanna fold over the edge of the fabric so that the elastic is encased and then you want to use a straight stitch to sew the casing closed and you want to remember that while you're sewing you want to lightly tug at the folded fabric this way you'll maintain the flexibility of the elastic all right so the back of your dress should now look like this okay so now you want to sandwich the front and the back of the dress on top of one another so that they are right sides facing and then you're going to pin along the edge of one side of the dress and it doesn't matter which side, you can choose. You wanna use a serger or a zigzag stitch to professionally finish the edge of the dress. And again, if you're using a zigzag stitch, you wanna be sure to sew about a half inch away from the edge. So it should look like this, and then you wanna open the dress and hem the bottom of the dress by creating a half inch fold and then sewing on top of the fold. I fast forwarded this step because it's pretty simple and easy to understand but let me know if you need a little bit more instructions on it. You wanna do a straight stitch all along the bottom. The stitch length is four and the tension is four. So your hem should look like this, and then you wanna close the dress by matching the right sides of the front and the back of the dress. So since I'm dealing with non-stretch fabric, it's imperative that I add a zipper to the side seam. And so in order to do that, I just sewed up the side seam about halfway up my dress and then I installed the zipper. I didn't want to make this tutorial too long so I didn't record the part where I installed the zipper but if you'd like me to make a separate video on how to install a zipper into a garment let me know and I'd be happy to make a video for you all. The zipper should look like this once it has been installed and the last step now is to pin the straps in place on the back of the dress and then sew them down and you're good to go.